Don't stop. Don't stop. Like anyone should know. Like anyone should know. You brought the cheese into my life. You dropped it down on. it up on that same plate you made me feel like you didn't know what you were doing what you were doing but it was all a simple hope yes we all know what that means it's that time again folks it's that seven o'clock on a thursday on a thursday bradley on a thursday i mean what and better day i i don't think there is a better day than thursday i mean you don't really. want to do it on friday because you know I, no. i'm floored by now Right, right. Yeah. I would be under the table at this time on Friday. Right, as as, as we all should be. Right, uh -huh. right. Um, but yeah, so, excited. I'm I'm excited too, Bradley. It's been it's been a couple of weeks. You've been off in uh, the great had, state of had to be off. Yeah, Texas. I was. I was down in Texas, and I was down there during Game One of the World Series. Oh, what what a catastrophe yeah. that was! I mean, we huh? might have the wrong demo for that, but yeah. I don't know if we have a demo yet, uh, Bradley, but uh, well, let's ask. Let's ask all four of them. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll do that. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's us. It's uh, Chris and Bradley here with a 60 foot guinea pig podcast. Just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> it does. The uh, guinea pig, actually. But, yeah, yeah. I think he's 60 foot and two inches. Right. Or is he just gaining girth? Uh, it's more. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's both really height and girth. Like, uh, yeah. It's I mean, genetic. eventually his feet won't be able to touch the ground, and he'll be just, you know, he'll move him around with a forklift. I don't two know. Forklifts. You got to look at the picture again. Is his, are his feet yeah. touching? You can't really. Oh, tell. I forgot. He went. Uh, he got a little scary for the holiday. That's right. Yeah, a little, a little disturbing. <laughs> a little, <laughs> to say a little the least. frightening. Yeah. Well, the guinea pig is always a little frightening. Yeah, because you never um, know when he's going to eat your idea. This is true. And yeah. and saying that, you you've now. You've now set the stage for the show. Mm -hmm. Everyone now understands exactly what this is all about. Right. It's about the fact that we as creatives, we as idea generators, we generate so many ideas sometimes that some of those yeah. ideas just fly yeah. into the ether. They get swallowed up by, in my case, an imaginary guinea pig. In your case, uh, have we decided what it is yet? Oh, let's let's let me let's hold on that until next week. Because okay. I'm excited to talk to our guest. I am as well. Because I would say this person has a lean guinea pig. You think so? Yeah, I do. You think so? I would say well, I'm I'm almost I'm almost positive this person has an even more enormous guinea pig because I feel like the more mm -hmm. things you do, yeah, the more things you come up with to do. That's a good point. Yeah. But I read her CV and I'm like this is a person who does what they want to do. And I, I, yeah, I, I envy that. That's a big deal. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah I, I, I like people who say they're going to do things and do things. I probably shouldn't put that as a generalization. That's dangerous, but yeah. Generalizations are generally dangerous. How about this? I read last week that when someone, uh, uh, the author was talking about discipline and mm. for them to help define discipline for themselves, they they redefine discipline as choice. So anytime that they think about discipline, they think about choice. Mm. Did I choose to do something or did I choose not to do something? Um, and everything's very active in that framework. And I thought that was really interesting. And I managed to hang on to it for mm, three days. And, uh, and now Good I'm completely you. undisciplined or, or I'm, or I, or I, I'm not making choices, but that is to say, um, yeah, I think we've got an exciting guest. I think they have made some strong choices and, mm. and as we all wish to do gotten yes. away with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Renee wants to know, what do we feed the guinea pig? What do we feed uh, the guinea pig? <laughs> ideas, Renee, ideas. Thank you for yeah. asking. Uh, but yeah, with without much further ado, uh, let yeah. me introduce our guests this evening. Okay, and that is someone who is uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, someone who perhaps you've 
recently been introduced to Bradley, but I think you are going to get to know and love this person as much as I do. Yeah. This is uh, someone I've shared the stage with as well as, uh, I don't know what else. I guess the stage as the, as the audience with, I've shared the audience with her as well. There you go. Ah, good. One. Uh, good turn. So I'm just going to bring her up. Uh, yeah. Jessica, Jessica Fischenfeld, ladies and gentlemen. Woo, Jessica. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So great um, to see you, Chris, and great to meet you, Bradley. Great to meet you. Welcome. Really glad, really glad to have you on. Um, you're a, I, my first thought was like, you're not even a triple threat. You've got like 18 <laughs> things going on. Um, I do I'm a lot of random stuff. Uh, well, I mean, we're going we're gonna to get into it, but I mean, but like, okay, so opera, you know, uh, actually Bass led off with that. You're an outstanding improviser, oh, um, <laughs> comedian, uh, opera singer, fitness trainer, aerialist. Um, that's, I'm out of breath just saying all those things. It's true. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's absolutely amazing. And when, uh, when we, when I think about like choice, I like, wow, that's a, that's a person who has managed to make choices and, and gotten away with it. Hats off to that. So somehow I just keep making choice. I'm just interested in too many things. And I just yeah. keep, I keep, I'm, and I'm a kind of person who like thinks of it and then actually does it. So mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, you got to try, you know, I'm, when did I'm just that start? Curious. You know, I was I was doing a podcast interview with my best friend Lexi on her podcast. Not to mm. like, you know, compete with podcasts, but oh no, 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 okay. please she, drop drop a name. I, I, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> uh, it's called In the Deep End, but um, In the Deep End, In the Deep End. But she really brought to light that, like, I thought it was a more recent thing. But she was like, No, no, no. This started when you were like back in like elementary school. Like I mm -hmm. was doing like soccer dancing uh like and i just kept like every time my parent like my parents encouraged me to do something and i would just like stick with it and so like i was been dancing for a very long time um didn't make the middle school soccer team so i kind of uh cut my losses there but i did play soccer growing up and um and then I did karate and then like my, one of my first fitness jobs was teaching kickboxing. So I feel like there was like a little link there. So, uh, yeah. yeah I, I've just like collected so many interests over the years. Um, I, I was a fencer. I did, I was on the fencing team in high school and like oh. managed to make captain by my senior year. So did, you have, I, did like, you have a specific weapon or were you three weapon? Oh yeah. 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 I was a foil fencer. Okay. The best one. That was, that was my way of subtly injecting that I used to be a fencer as well. Was that did I get Ooh. it across? Oh my God. Wait, yeah. what weapon did you fence? Epe all the way. Epe. Okay. I'm that... Tall and lanky and screw right away. Yes. Okay. That's my that. best friend Lexi is all was also an FAS <laughs> and she was tall. She is tall and lanky. <laughs> I wish we could like have a whole section on the the stereotypes of fencers but i think that's oh, a little for too sure. much for our yeah. For this podcast. foilists are yeah foilists are are are, are lean like, and generally small and usually mm -hmm. young <laughs> um and then epists are always tall and lanky and saberists are mixed between like super heavy set guys and old men yeah, but like, but the personality <laughs> traits of each, like, oh. FAS, since the target area is anywhere in the body, you can just kind Absolutely. of like throw oh. your blade wherever. Foil was the smallest target area. So you had to be yeah. really skilled and precise. And right so, away. Not to like throw shade, but. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I, I, I succeeded mostly through dirty tricks. I had a couple of shots of like tagging people right in the wrist. Um, as they lean forward and actually like as you mentioned we're really getting in the weeds on fencing conversations yeah, so maybe yeah. this is a different it's okay podcast, please, but, please. Yeah, we'll, you know, <laughs> okay. but uh epists because you can hit anywhere on the body they tend to have most of them tend to go for what's called a whip shot so and mm -hmm. uh if you ever see it in olympics or any televised they uh wait this is a podcast why am i trying to visually demonstrate this <laughs> um Explain they words. yeah they 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 whip it back and forth until they get their blade moving and then at the last second they extend so that that momentum bends the blade over mm -hmm. your guard and tags you like in the shoulder or the face or wherever and 
that's just where all epiests start and it's wild and it's flaily and i hated it <laughs> so i got really good at knocking people under the elbow or under the wrist Ooh. just because as soon as like they show me the timing of, yeah it's a metronome right so it's yeah. like oh i know where i know where the upbeat is so that's yep. what i'm gonna get you yeah it uh, is very musical now that you think about yeah. it now that i think about it yeah uh, you're right yeah, but yeah but those I've, are I've days gotten a few whip shots myself as a foil mm. fencer uh, like when someone was leaning forward too much it was like they i got it right on their back it was like ha -ha. Ooh, that's it's not, like, it's not only like it's not only like a gratifying point but it's like a humiliating point for the other oh, person yeah. it's like oh, oh yeah, shit yeah. like i shouldn't have been leaning forward like they shouldn't have been able to to get me on the back like that's really yeah that's no, not they, good no that you should not have been able to get them in the back <laughs> i know i <laughs> i'm going down some path that i've never been before and i'm really enjoying it um <laughs> I don't we can think, move on yeah i don't yeah i don't think that fencing is very popular in the southeast i just have to say that straight out Okay. Um, and I'm pretty sure that both of you are from the northeast or North, live there yeah, quite New a while. York. Oh no, no, you're not. You're not actually. Are you Dallas? From Bradley? Yeah. Dallas. Dallas. That's right. Fort Worth, actually. But yeah. But oh, no, but okay. you say Fort Worth and they're like, oh, is that next to Dallas? Yes, it is. Right. <laughs> Dallas <laughs> Fort Worth. Right. Dallas Fort Worth. That now, how do you it. how do you say Fort Worth though? Do you say like with gusto I, or I say Fort Worth. Okay. But when we were kids, it was Fort Worth. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was definitely fought. Fought F A W T. Oh, wow. Fought worth. Fought worth. I love you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> so that, was, that was the phrase. That's wow. almost close to a New England accent, actually. I've well, I've got the sweater, so maybe that's influencing yeah, it. Maybe yeah. that's <laughs> maybe that's it. But fought uh, worth. You're not from there, are you? <laughs> um. Anyway. <laughs> We could. I I love that I can pick that you're doing Phil Hartman as a New Englander. <laughs> that, um, yes, but yes, big fan. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of fencing going on in Texas, um, usually around the universities, that also along sense. the border. But you know, that's a <sighs> different kind of fence. Yes. Um, so oh. what? What? <laughs> These are the jokes. All right. So then, so we 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 got through the soccer team blues. We, we did fencing. Uh, and that was before or after the kickboxing instruction. That was way, and, that was way before I did fencing in high school and okay. kind of didn't, didn't continue with that, but I kind of, I miss it a lot. I still have my fencing gear in the attic of my parents' house in New York. Um, and then, yeah. And then in high school, I, I started doing, well, okay. Before that I started like doing musical theater. I went to musical theater camp, like starting when I was like 10 years old and, um, got to high school, did the musicals and my high school also did operas. And so that, that was my first introduction into opera. It was very rare for a high school. It was a public high school too. We just had yeah. like an incredible music staff on Long Island in Great Neck. Um, and yeah, they're, they're still going strong doing their operas every year. That's amazing. Wow. Um, uh, well, where did it go from there? Um, okay. And <laughs> well, so, then, all right. So, uh, well, actually, no, I don't want to ask about the operas. I do want to ask about the opera singing, singing, opera singing. Yes. Real, real great enunciation. The, so that got started in high school. Did that yes. continue after high school? Did you study? Did you? Yes. What, what, um, oh. So my, my family was very encouraging. They saw that I had a, a special knack for it. And mm -hmm. I was really passionate about it. And they encouraged me to uh, pursue that. And so I got my um, undergrad, I got a, a bachelor's in music from NYU Steinhardt. And then I went to Manhattan School of Music to get my master's in music in opera as well. So pursued that, um, was lucky enough right out of grad school to get like a residency, like a singer residency position. They call it a young artist program mm -hmm. at, uh, Palm beach opera where like the resident artists, like they're, they're there for the whole season and they sing smaller roles and they do like the big roles in family performances and understudy the big roles. And they do concerts throughout the season, donor events. You're just like on staff as like whatever they need, <laughs> you know? Um, and then like the big stars come in and play the lead roles and we get to kind of learn from them. And so it's like a training program that you're also like paid a small salary for. 
<laughs> everything not, not and, everything these days right. ends with, and then you're paid a small salary. A small salary <laughs> a, a where you barely survive. <laughs> no, it's gonna it might cover your bar tab. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump forward a little bit. I know you've done tons of opera in the time from then until yes. now. Yes. But I want to I want to focus on one specific operatic strategy that you took on last year. Yes. Uh, that was super interesting. Um, and I don't think anyone has done it before, not to my knowledge. And basically, I'll, I'll just jump to it. You you combined aerialist and opera into one act. It, now, where did that come from? So I, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but there are a handful of people who do it. Dang and it. I was inspired by those people. So it, but you're it the was, best at it. You're clearly mm, the best at yeah. it. Yeah. I I don't know if that's true. There are there are aerialists who are much more well trained than I am. I I had just started, I had just learned how to be an aerialist when I moved to Savannah in 2020. Uh and basically after doing a gig, an outdoor gig in Montana, it was like an opera concert, it was like a burlesque. It was called Opera Lesque and it was in Montana and there was this aerialist singer who like this is her niche this is her thing that she does and so she she was like doing aerial and singing and sometimes I was singing and she was doing just aerial and since I have like such a strong background in fitness I just thought I was like I think I can do that and so I went back to Savannah and googled you know, aerial studio. And I found Savannah Cirque uh, and started training to be an aerialist there. So it really, and I was only like a year and a half into my aerial training when I got approached about auditioning for America's Got Talent to perform an aerial opera singing act on the show. So I got my skills to be like good enough to perform a pretty simple aerial act. Like it looks complicated to the average person mm. <laughs> because doing aerial acrobatics is no small feat, like even the most basic things. But to like a highly trained aerialist, it was like a pretty simple routine. Um, but, you know, to do that and sing opera was like, a full body, like one of the hardest things I've ever tried to tackle. So, you know, did you do I, that? Think, did you I do this on your own? that are already hard and make them harder. That's like my <laughs> thing. <laughs> did you do that on your own or did you bring in like coaching to put the act together? Uh, I had, uh, I, I had one particular coach, um, Chelsea Nugent, who uh, was my, I met her at Savannah Cirque and she ended up starting her own studio, um, Cirque Divina. And just like, I was like, I can't afford to like have like one-on-ones all the time. That would have just like, I don't have that kind of money. And she just, you know, was willing to help me out and just be like, don't worry about it for now. Like, we're going to work on this together. She was planning to actually come with me and um, like, you know, be my in-person coach, like for the whole, like, and, and help me like, you know, lift me during the act, like off stage, like, cause the hoop goes up and down. And so she was going to like, since she's so knowledgeable about the act, she helped me put it together. She was going to be there to sort of guide everything, but she ended up getting COVID at the last second. And so mm. she couldn't come with me sadly, oh but, oh my God, I owe so much to her. And like, we ended up trading. I, since I'm a personal trainer, I gave her some personal training in exchange for all of the help that she gave me. So nice. Yeah. Nice. So in your opinion, which one was your, your favorite judge and which was your least favorite judge? Can you even say? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> uh, I probably have to say, um, Heidi Klum was the quickest to say yes. She Aww. said, I love your onesie. First of all. <laughs> and so of course I had to tell my friend who designed and created my my costume um that she got a, a high compliment from Heidi Klum. From Miss Heidi. Um and my least favorite was um uh wow, now I'm blanking on his name because I hate him. Germaphobe, so much. Simon Gallo. No, Simon Simon ended up he was like on the fence and he ended up saying yes. Um wow. and Sophia said yes as well. 
uh, but for like weird reasons. <laughs> she was like, I thought it was funny when your when your skirt was over your head and you were upside down. I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but she was she gave me a yes. Yes, that's but the it was app. Howie. Howie. <laughs> Howie. Howie hates opera. He was like, I don't get it. I I thought that you looked like you you seemed like a bird stuck in a tree to me. And so he, he was the negative Nancy who gave me a no, but you only need three to pass. And so I did right, pass, yeah. but I ultimately didn't get invited to the live rounds because something people don't realize, people who watch the show, they think everyone who passes the judges, like the audition round, moves on to the live rounds. But yeah. it's really only like maybe 20 or 30% of the passing acts actually get invited to the live rounds. So I was lucky enough that they actually like aired a little bit of my footage. They put me in like a cute little montage and it's a great clip for my reel. So <laughs> just, you know, grateful for, for what I got. Um, they didn't televise what my, what my name was, which was sad, but no, it's fine, no, you know, <laughs> yeah, you got three, you got three goes and, Oh. Howie Mandel but, can go put a surgical glove on his head and blow it up. That's right. Um, but you also, you had some behind the scenes interview uh, bits, not full yes. length interview, but. Yeah, yes. And I think every video. time I, I knew about it because you would text me. Uh, exactly. Video. Oh my God. <laughs> I would like text, <laughs> I I text you the again. video. As, well, yeah. Yeah. You uh, you were media stalking her best. That's I I was, I was fanboying uh, a dear a friend. Mine, friend. So. All right. Yeah. Okay, well, was he the only one? No, a few people did send me clips. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. Significantly less weird. <laughs> yes. Well, I played I, was, I played her almost fake dad on stage. So I it was my right as a fatherly figure to say your, your right as a, as an almost fake dad. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. What was the show that you were the almost fake dad? Uh Can't Mama guess. Mia. Oh, it was Mama <laughs> Mia. Okay. Why do you do that? I feel like you like I can't get out of a conversation without you bringing up Mamma Mia. You know what? <laughs> it's very it happens so many in times. Chris's life. Yeah. <laughs> it happens so many times. <laughs> well, <Every> you know. <laughs> I was in Mamma Mia. <laughs> <laughs> I was the Colin Firth part. <laughs> the, the what? Weren't you the Colin Firth part? No. Yes. 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 That was the Colin okay. Firth part. Yes. Yes. Not that I've seen any of it. That's okay. That was a, that was pretty knowledgeable though that you mm -hmm. remembered the actor. Mm. Yeah. That was a poll. <laughs> All right. So opera singer, aerialist, improviser, comedian. Let's talk about stand up. Yeah. Okay. Well, how, why do you like being punched in the face? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. You know, I started doing, I did improv in high school and like, mm -hmm. honestly thought I was terrible at it. I didn't make the improv troupe my freshman <sighs> year. These just which would have arbitrary been drama teachers deciding people's fate. No, that was student <laughs> run. It was student run. Oh, 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 and, oh, right. you know, I just wasn't funny enough freshman year. And I just decided like, this isn't going to be my thing. So I didn't audition any other year. Mm -hmm. Um and jump forward to moving to Savannah from New York in 2020, <laughs> around the same time I started training as an aerialist, I found Front Porch Improv. And I don't, I don't even remember like what like inspired me to look for an improv theater. I just, I don't know. I just, I was like, now's the time I'm going to like pick up improv again and try. And I Googled <laughs> improv Savannah and I found them and I started taking classes there. I started with some drop-ins and then I took some full courses and eventually got to like perform with them and started doing musical improv, which felt like super fun, like combining different skills together <laughs> once again. Um, and then I started like kind of writing my own sketches and doing, getting into sketch comedy. And I was like, you know, I, but I, like I draw the line there. I can never do stand up. Like I'm, it's too scary. I, it's not for me, mm -hmm. but I kept, I, I, I started writing some material and I was like, maybe if I do it someday, I don't know. Like, I'm just going to start writing. So like for probably over a year, I was sort of just collecting stand up bits, like funny little thoughts I had, like in a long iPhone note. And 
I decided, you know what, I, I should give it a try. And it was really, it was my friend Mallory Bryant in New York who gave me the final, like the biggest nudge to do it. This was like right before I, cause I visited New York before we officially moved to LA, mm -hmm. uh, which is where I am now for those <laughs> tuning in. Um, and she was like, before you leave, just go to an open mic, like go to the open mic that I like, she's like, I'm not going to be the host that night, that, that day, but like, just go to the grizzly pair and do the open mic. You're going to be so glad you finally just did it. And so I finally kind of committed to putting together a five minute set and I just did it. And I was like, you know what? This isn't that bad. This, it was like three comedians there. It was in the middle of the day. It was basically just the host ver verbally reacting to everything I said. So it was, you know, a terrible crowd, but oh yeah, I was like, oh, I can, I can do this. Like half the battle is just having stage presence and being able to like talk in front of an audience and remember what you were going to say. So I felt like I just, I just needed to have some really great material. And so once I moved to LA, almost immediately, I signed up for uh, Leslie Wolf's stand up class, which is basically for four weeks, she takes people who've never done stand up before to performing like in a showcase at um, Flappers Burbank, a, a club, like a, a good club in, in LA. And it was like, it was such an awesome class. It gave me so much structure. We were like workshopping. The students were like workshopping with each other, kind of punching up each other's material in between mm -hmm. classes. And I was like, oh, that's how you do this. Okay. And so now I get it. And it's just a matter of like refining and going to open mics. And I've been lucky to, to get like programmed on some shows and it's, it's really exciting. It's I've, I've been bitten by the stand up bug and now I'm like, I must get to the top. No, I don't, I don't know how long I'll, <laughs> I don't know. Like I, at the very least, I want it to be a tool for me, like in mm -hmm. comedy in general, whether it be just like helping my career, my acting career, or, you know, I'm not like trying to be the best stand up comedian in the, in the world. I'm just like, trying to use it as another tool for um, my creativity and my performing. And, you know, if I, I do, I also do like musical cabarets. So if I can like use stand up to enhance my banter during my cabarets, then so be it, you know? So I think in general, it's just a great skill to have. That's amazing. So you, uh, you recently posted an interaction with a crowd member. Um, Oh. Now, have you done more than one? I, I, I just saw the one. Did you have I, a I thought it was, Is that what he's yeah. leading you yeah. into? Yeah, she she had a heckler. Okay. Um, oh, it was just some crowd work. He wasn't over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I it felt like he was a well, little... it, it taught me. It teaches you. You know, when you open up to crowd work, you you realize like the things you have to be prepared for. And this guy like hit on me hardcore, and I was like, oh, I need to be better prepared for that next time. Mm. <laughs> You need to you need to drop him. <laughs> mm -hmm. I need to be prepared yeah. with better comebacks. I think but I, I think I handled it okay. Brian, uh, Brian, it. Ryan, Brian, Ryan. I think. Yeah, I got his name wrong like three times, and then he. Oh no, was that worked like, in your favor. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It like really cut him down. Mm. <laughs> um, and then just gave him the one-two punch at the end, saying basically I wasn't like interested. So. Because I'm married, because <laughs> I'm married, and I'm, and beyond that, I'm still yeah. not interested. <laughs> I think I'm currently doing from, uh, an act right now, oh. um, so not the right time anyway. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes me think of a meme that I saw. I, I, uh, among comedians, I really like Kyle Kinane. Uh, okay. And he had a uh, he just had a post the other day, and it's it was just a copy. It was a text post, and it simply said, "Crowd work. These are two words I don't like individually, much less together." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I'm there with you, man." Oh, that's funny. I think it's fun. I'm mm. I'm I'm excited to try some more. I'm preparing for my first ten minute set uh, mm -hmm. in like about a week and a half. So and how like, much? Okay. How much work does it take to get 10 minutes together that you feel good about? Um, I feel like it's been like a it's been like a steady building because 
I've, you know, since my class, since my class um, showcase, which was like last month, <laughs> um, I've like, I've kind of added and, and deleted some material just depending on the amount of time that I had on certain shows. And so I have to time it out, but I think with like the material that I've already written, I can kind of just add stuff in that I kind of put aside for the moment. And, and I think I'm almost there. Like I did one seven minute set and I just need to basically like add some stuff back in from, from what I deleted from the last set. And so I, it's like, I wouldn't say it's like, it's not like so daunting because you're not like writing 10 minutes from scratch. You're like building right. on what you've already developed, like the five minute and then some other five minutes. And so, you know, so you're just kind of mixing and matching and, and adding. And so I feel like I'm not adding that much. I'm just kind of refining what I have and adding a couple new ideas that I just thought of like this week. <laughs> Seems like a lot of work. It, I mean, it is a lot like it. Yeah. You really have to commit to, to writing and trial and, and error and falling on your face and oh, getting yeah. back up. And yeah, For this sure. is exhausting. And yeah. then you go teach a fitness class. <laughs> oh that's the easy oh. part <laughs> that's easy well <laughs> at least you, there's there are no surprises really with that so <laughs> <laughs> oh we hope not yeah. at least you go into you know my my personal training i go in knowing that there's going to be complaining and groaning <laughs> mm -hmm. do you have like the headset and like when i walk by that studio in the gym and i hear the woman screaming like come on Guys, you got five more. And that no, is, right now I, I haven't done group fitness in a little while. I oh, okay. I have one-on-one -on -one clients. So ah, okay. Please I'm not, forgive me. I'm not straining my voice. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to leave an awkward pause right here. Yeah, you are because we're thinking about Abraham Lincoln. We are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. That's what happens. Lest we forget. <laughs> Never forget Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm going to put it out there. You, you, you're very active. You're doing a lot of things. Yeah. Um, myself, I, my brain is very active. Uh, I, I come up with a lot of things. Are there things that you come up with that never see the light of day? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I, I literally have like a list of sketches that I have that date back like two years and most of them I have never <laughs> completed either because it was I looked at it again and I was like oh that's actually a stupid idea or mm -hmm. it's just like too too time like it would just be like too full of a production like I'd never be able to pull it off myself uh, the idea is too grand um I currently have half a music video filmed I still have yeah. to film the other half I know. I know. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. That's a hurdle. Um, yeah. We kind of ran into a, a roadblock when I thought I raised enough money for this one location and they ended up um, not being able to do it for the amount that they sort of originally said they would. So, huh. so I have to sort of reorganize, regroup, um, potentially fundraise more and just, I don't know. I just want to finish it. <laughs> Well, the song is done, right? Yeah, the song is complete okay. and released. It's called <laughs> The Spy. The and spy. It, it's a really cool song. It's like very, it's like semi-operatic kind of cabaret. Um, a very dramatic story about this spy that grew up in poverty and to escape this like kind of third, third world country situation. She trains to be an assassin and becomes like one of the world's best assassins and ends up falling in love with her, with a target and risks her, like sacrifices her life for her. Like maybe if you, you know, she like, this is a really complex narrative for it is real. It is. Yes. It, it, which is why I was like, okay, this has to be <laughs> like a music video, but it's not a normal music video. Like it's like a, it's like a short film almost. So, okay. You know, the locations were just so specific. It couldn't just be like on a green screen, like kind of bopping around, you know, like it's like no. it <laughs> dictates every verse dictates like a very specific scenario and action. And like I have a stunt team, like a, a fight choreographer who mm -hmm. I was collaborating with. And 
like everyone was ready to go. And, um, and yeah, we just have to figure out this location situation. And now this location situation. Yes. Who is it that raised their prices? We all want to know. I'm not going to. Well, up. actually, <laughs> yeah, she, she reached out to me to play a bit part and I gave her, you know, how much I, it was Chris Bass. It, it was, was Chris Bass. Yeah, she just um, wasn't. It's Chris Bass's house. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, yeah. It was really important in the scouting. <laughs> <laughs> like we can't do it in any other IT support home office. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's so much more than that bradley it's so much more i than know that. i know yeah uh, uh that's amazing again I, I, that's what i thought and it was a preconceived notion so please forgive me but it doesn't seem like you spend a lot of time hesitating like maybe yeah like, i want to do that and i do it and, yeah uh, i i'm definitely like a strike while, while the iron is hot kind of person mm -hmm. i've literally like been like falling asleep and then I'll get an idea and I'll like text someone like, Hey, before I forget, we have to do that. Like, like I just, I just helped uh, my writer friend in LA who fun fact went to that musical theater camp with me when we were 10 oh, years wow. old. Um, yeah, we've reconnected since I moved here and um, I helped him organize a table read of his comedy pilot and he was, he literally was like, I would never have done this without you because like, I don't know. I, he's, it, the writing is so good. He's so talented. And I'm like, okay, we got to do this. And sometimes you just, you won't, if you hesitate, you won't do it. So it's like, you got to just start, even if it's just taking the first step, that's going to hold you accountable to like finish, you know, even if it's just sending that text, like, Hey, before, before we forget, like we need to start planning that table read. You know, even if it's just like reaching out to a friend, just like that accountability is so important. Otherwise, it's like you're kind of like in a vacuum by yourself. Like, uh, am I going to do this? When am I going to do this? Like, what does it even mean to start? You know, so I go through that. But I say, am I going to do this? And then I get an email from my boss. Uh. <laughs> but but well, that's that's really amazing i do really have the luxury of having a, a partner my husband is uh has a stable teaching job so but even before that like we were both like we we called each we called ourselves the project people because we were always just like down to do a project we're always like in in the opera world like contemporary opera i don't know somehow we just got by <laughs> we we had like you know multiple jobs but um, now he's a full-time teacher, choir director. I was going to say, was, um, you kind of hinted at it, but is he also a creative, uh, uh, yes. an artist? Yeah. Like, okay. Arguably more creative than me. He's a jazz pianist, opera singer, like singer of other styles, like composer. He's now like, you can't see it, but there's a cello in here. He bought a cello and is, has, has been like learning cello in the past year and finally like actually had his first like performance on a recital that he organized. Um, you two sound unbearable at parties. <laughs> <laughs> They're very nice at parties. I They're bet they nice. have a song. I bet if there's a piano, somebody will ask you to do they a, have a couple and you songs. got it. You, you're ready. You got like three. We've sung pocket. together at, <laughs> at several parties, but like not, <laughs> not, not because we're like, we have to sing. It's like, <laughs> Usually when prompted to or oh yes. co coerced. <laughs> I'm I'm making I I'm making fun because it's fun. Yes, um that usually okay. I'm the person at the party standing back with my whiskey going, Wow, they're good. They're really good. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I had committed to something that much. Oh, the, mm. the secret curtain has opened. Oh, Ooh, I don't drink. That, I'm not getting a secret curtain today. I, well, here, cheers, folks. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Let's all take. This is the drinking time right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Just we all need a sip. Sorry for that interruption. That's okay. It was necessary. No, I was saying I wish that actually, and this is true, although I don't walk around too much of the day uh embroiled with regret. But <laughs> there are artists such as yourself, and I think I'm not alone when I think about this sensibly, when I see artists such as yourself who have succeeded, not, not commercial or financial success. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Um, but 
He said, you know, I wanted to study music and I studied music and I became a musician. I wanted to learn how to be an aerialist. I, 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 I found a studio. I, I bartered my lessons <laughs> and I, and I managed and I wound up on television getting shot down by freaking St. Elsewhere doctor. And, <laughs> and, and you got there. Um, and there are certain things that sometimes I look at, and I'm like, I, I sometimes wish I had committed to piano when I was younger or oh, if I had stuck with if, if things that I tried and maybe uh, didn't succeed at right away and wound up not putting forth the effort to get over that hurdle of the hard. Mm. Um, and I think for, I don't get a lot of thoughts on that and I don't want to go off on a tangent, but it's, I, I think I just I admire people that have that stick with itness that mm -hmm. that can get through the hard or um, have something programmed in them. Maybe it's maybe it's parental encouragement, maybe it's opportunity, maybe it's you know just having great hair that they're <laughs> they're able to that they're able to stick. Oh, with come on now, and Bradley. Get this is a room. Gauntlet. Get through the gauntlet of becoming an expert. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. I, and there, I was going to say, this is a room of great hair, so you don't need to go there. There is a lot of great hair in the room tonight. Pretty good hair. <laughs> gotta say. Yeah, I wish yeah. that, you know, the audio listeners could see the mm, hair right. talent right now. Yeah. So much hair. <laughs> <laughs> Was um, there a question in there? I don't. Sorry, I, I no. Wasn't. I was just no. no okay. I, I was. <laughs> no I was going to make a. I mean, had, I had I mean, a did statement. you? Did, actually, I'll ask a question out of that. Okay. Was there okay. something? Well, here's. It, it's a two part question. You may answer either one. Is there something you ever tried and you backed off of, or is there something in particular that you've done that you had to work excessively hard at? Um, violin. Yeah. Um, I started, my aunt is a professional violinist. She's incredible. She's classically trained and, and now is like plays in like bands, like rock bands. Um, and so she gave me like two of her like old violins and in, I think it was elementary school through middle school, I played violin and I just couldn't, I, I hated practicing, I, it just like, I don't know, it couldn't, I couldn't get through to like the next level. Like, I don't know, it was a mental block. I was, <laughs> I shared like, you know, in most orchestras, there's like first violin and second violin. Mm -hmm. In middle school, there was also third violin. And I shared the, <laughs> the last folder in third violin with my best friend, Lexi, the epiest. <laughs> <laughs> and like she had these long nails like you're not supposed to have long nails when you're playing violin like it was like her long nails and my like screechy tone like it, we just it was we were laughable it was so bad we did not practice like it was not good um so we ended up joining choir and it was like oh this is what's for us <laughs> but um <laughs> But when I, I was taking like private violin lessons and like every week I would tell my parents, actually, I want to do piano. And it was like this, this very patient teacher who taught both violin and piano. So like every other week I'd be like doing violin and then piano and then violin and piano. And like I never got good at either of them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so I quit. But now now I'm like, oh, man, I want to pick up violin again and like see if I can progress now now that i'm yeah. a little bit more and then, um, ambitious <laughs> and then you got two degrees in performance training from prestigious universities right and yet that violin got away <laughs> that violin man <laughs> so sad i do wish that i were better at piano too i did take lessons and it was and like i would feel like a more capable musician if i could really if I were more proficient on the piano, like accompanying myself, like I can accompany myself on like very basic four chord pop songs if I like really practice. Um, but I'm in no way a, a good pianist. Oh, can I, <laughs> can I break in for just a second here? If, if, if you can avoid it at all costs, do not take that four chord pianist uh, guy who's, who's on all the social media. Don't take his course. Oh, okay. 
I won't. Just don't do it. Yeah. I've asked my husband to to give me piano lessons many times, and he said no because he knows I, I don't have time to practice. <laughs> that can also put a strain on a relationship. Passing on a lifelong skill <gasps> to a person that you know is might might you know make you a beverage or not. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I, that, that's a lot of trust. That's true. Yeah, I won't put him through that horror. <laughs> But we both want to learn guitar, so I, because I, I want to, I want to like be proficient on an instrument, instrument where I can accompany myself. Because I think, ulti like one of my goals is to do like a full stand up show where I also include some like original comedy songs, mm -hmm. you know. And like guitar is the easiest way, you know. You don't have to like lug on like a keyboard or a piano or a regular. <laughs> you know right. onto stage you can just bring your guitar and like easy yeah <laughs> so i'm i'm definitely envious of my friends who can do that and and want to be able to do that myself so that i think be it's probably challenge. i feel like it's within your reach people say it's that guitar is easy to pick up i just haven't started so i yeah. think i've met I've, I've gotten the c chord and it looks like something like this it's right. like a claw hand you're, like you're that. gonna have to clip those nails though yeah, you're probably right. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. No, you're probably right. Well, they're, they're like <laughs> kind of short. I don't know. I do like them short. I do not like having long nails because then they break and then I can't stop picking at I them. Say, have you ever had a nail incident while you were doing an aerial act? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I've never, not, not a serious one, but I've, I've probably like broken a nail, like <laughs> make cracked it or like something. <laughs> um. <laughs> I feel like bruising is is something that happens a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my god. You need to like I'm I'm pretty out of practice because I, you know, haven't been training at a studio. Um and I, I own a hoop and silks, but unless I have somewhere to attach them <laughs> mm -hmm. to something right. hanging, I can't use them. And it's a whole like you have to condition the backs of your knees and your elbow and like right yeah it's it's crazy it's it's very painful. <laughs> I think this is like the most kick-ass driveway attachment on the block is is what you're really describing. <laughs> that would be cool. I wish yeah. I had. I wish I had that access. I think our garage doesn't really have. Um, <laughs> That so like, as opposed to the usual garage that would have like the basketball net. Correct. You right. have like, an air yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no. She's got the hoop or the, or the silks. It needs to be pretty tall though. It needs to be like, I don't know, 15, 20 feet in the air. Yeah. Or like, actually no, that like the, the hoop would be like 10 or 15 feet in the air. So like the, the scaffolding would have to be like 20 to 25 feet in the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <gasps> so has anyone thought about doing competitive aerials? Uh, is that is that something that's a thing There's gotta yeah, yeah. Be. oh yeah no yeah. no there yeah. that is fully a thing yes yeah. <laughs> my teachers <laughs> all compete in like the the nationals and world no 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 you're you're talking about people like you know doing tricks and stuff and and that but I, i'm talking about like involving a ball and a goal oh. that's what i want to see <laughs> what oh you're making a joke no, well, I'm he is, but what he's joke. envisioning is you know, like you'd have two teams it. of six. Yes. And they're all in static positions hanging. You can choose your yes. height, or if you're in the silks, <sighs> you can adjust your height. And then somehow there is a ball that is passed between teams and ultimately I through, see. In, through I an see. orifice. And yeah, it, that's you know, if you've, if you've got the right hold, you can do some swinging there. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. That's dangerous, yeah. of course, but it's possible. Right. Yeah. Um, there's helmets. And pass it can be passing. It can pass. Yeah. Um, it sounds yeah. like Quidditch, honestly. It sounds it, it like does, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> this has to be written into a book now. Yes. <laughs> right. Can let JK Rowling know that. Okay, so we've covered right, yeah. we've covered just about every aspect of what you've done, but we we haven't covered your newest thing now, your newest it um is. You're, you're taking classes. You're taking classes in uh, voiceover. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, my God. I was like, <laughs> what's left? What's new? I don't know. <laughs> yes. It's staring me right in the face. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I just I just finished my first voiceover for animation class with Voice Very Masters. Nice. Uh, Voice Masters. Excellent. 
Yes. And it was amazing. It was so fun uh, working with Paulette and Mimi and Ashley and like just getting back to like playing and just being so silly and um, exploring like movement while you're like that informs the voice. Like I just learned so much. It was just yeah. so illuminating. Um, and I definitely want to do more of that. So it was very cool. There's more to be done. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. And you're in the right <laughs> town for it. Yes. Yes. That is oh, true. That's amazing. Did you remind me in the course I've taken a couple of those in the course that you take, uh, took, did you have to sing or is that in the next level? I did actually. There was one week that the homework assignment was to bring in, um, they assigned us uh, a scene and a song and right. the song you had to sort of, it, it wasn't necessarily a song from the character that you were assigned, but you had to sing it like that character. Okay. So. And yes. did, did everybody, and you sang and everybody quit? <laughs> no, <laughs> I sang and, and I, you know, I got notes. I got some notes. I got some good yes. notes from Paulette. And, Always notes, uh, otherwise it's not a class. Exactly. Um, yeah, so it was like, you know, bringing a little bit more character and movement to the singing. And it was like, it was not a super easy song. It was <laughs> So I was like, this is already vocally kind of challenging, but uh, we'll do my what, best. What song was it? It was um, it was a song from Tangled. It was like one of okay. her first songs, I think. It was, I forget what it was called. Uh, mm. It's not I it See the like, Light. It's not that one. It's, no, uh, no. It was like she's like doing all the chores at home. Right, right, and, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. The That's usual it. morning lineup. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was fun. And I had to sing it like the the character I was reading was like a Cinderella type character. So it, it matched up like kind of nicely. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Some good synergies there. Yes, totally. Bradley, what did you sing in your animation level one uh i sang something from hercules yeah yeah I yeah, yeah yeah it was the women had this one and then the men had yeah. hercules okay. or or you yeah. could have like anyone could have sung anything but that those right. were like the ranges that kind of worked best for male and female voices yeah. i think the only remember what i really remember is we had to turn in a recording of it yeah before class yeah yeah and yeah, i mixed did. mine and oh, so because I because I got those extra that drill set. Yeah, I was definitely extra because you know what? I'm just doing what is that a leg up? I'm taking it. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I had to say and then I think I had to sing it live as as I. Recall. Yeah, I, didn't I wasn't prepared to like, luckily, I sounded OK, but I was like, I didn't know that we'd be doing it again live and so i didn't like warm up or anything right <laughs> i was like oh no <laughs> like no, nothing is worse live. than like surprise you have to sing right now like ah! <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's for, auditioning for podcast, is the worst yeah auditioning is worse auditioning is the job it is. I know. That is the job. When you get a booking, no. that's just dessert. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I thought, I mean, opera auditioning is truly like nothing is worse. It's horrible. It's do so they do much that work. behind a? Do you have to do that behind a curtain or are you? No, it's, it's not like orchestral jobs. Okay. Um, no, it's very much you see the person, and it is. I have all that. That's a whole. That's an interview for another day about the opera industry and how that works. But um, but it's so hard. Like not like hardly ever in an actual opera do you sing two big arias back to back. But in an audition, you have to bring your top five, your your five arias. Like all of them have to be like different. Like for example, usually it's like you bring an Italian, German. French, English, and then like a fifth, like usually a contemporary English mm -hmm. or something, or like some mix and match of that, or like a Mozart. Usually, like they'll have to, they'll, you have to do a Mozart or a Handel piece included. And then you get to come in and you start with whatever you want to start with. And then the panel chooses the second piece. So you have to be ready to sing five hard things. <laughs> 
and you don't know which one you're going to sing second. And so like just the combination of like which ones go best back to back, like you you just have to be prepared for anything. And it's it's so hard. It is. And you're so not hard. getting a session fee. Uh, no, God, no. <laughs> no. In fact, usually opera singers have to pay to uh, to apply to these auditions unless you have an agent, oh. which eventually I, I did have one. But like. For most of those young artist program auditions, you have to pay to apply. And some of those application fees are like $50, $60, like for one application. So these poor opera singers are graduating from grad school already in debt. And then they're spending like a, up to $1,000 applying to like all these things for just a job that, do, that doesn't even pay them well enough to like survive. It's It's a scam. <laughs> It yeah. feels like a scam. It do is. they it's do terrible. they do the same thing they do with like theater and musical theater where they have like a like a group audition thing that you can do like a, a bunch of people come together and just audition like a, a conference kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe I, I don't. I can't. Okay. I, mean, I can't picture what I, exactly I, that is. I had to do that for the opera. But I didn't audition for a singer. I was a stunt performer for a season at the Lyric Opera. Oh, because, that's cool. Because Roberto Alagna cannot get in a knife fight. No, he has to have, <laughs> there have to oh be other God. people. Oh, my God. There have to be other people there. Wait, you uh, were Alagna's stunt double? No, we did. Uh, we did. Uh, that was Romeo and Juliet. And, of course, he's okay. playing Juliet. Um, but the director, I was really in tight with the fight choreographer. And I'd actually okay. fight captain for him at a couple of other places, <gasps> but he brought me in on the crew for the season and the biggest one where we had like, well, first of all, Bass, it was exactly like you mentioned, which is about 25 people were there mm -hmm. and we were all given choreography and a couple of other things. And just throughout the evening, we were all tapped out eventually and okay. yeah eventually i was in the eventually i was in the passing group but yeah the, the director whose name i cannot remember didn't want the stars to be involved with sharp objects wow um wait who was so, the fight captain uh i don't remember uh right, nick sands uh nick sands was the fight was okay. the choreographer um and i think he had that gig for many years oh, uh, wow. at the lyric at the lyric anyhow um in chicago in chicago Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, in the opening sequence, and basically, like, so L Roberto Alonso and whoever is playing Tilbert would have like a little light exchange, and then their gangs would oh overwhelm each other, center <gasps> stage, and all of that. And That's what I mean, so like, funny. Uh, it was, yeah, it was a great gig. <laughs> it was. Wow. It was. It was so little work for a decent paycheck on a weekly. That's basis. great. <laughs> yeah um okay but no so, i was probably the one that annoyed you because i know also in that show the entire stunt crew got a note one night <laughs> it was from the chorus and the chorus was saying please tell the stunt crew to stop humming along <laughs> oh that's so funny um yeah because we did that's hilarious we were, we, hey you do it every night after night it's like starts to get catchy yeah, of course. Hey, you're 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 boosting the chorus, you know. Right. So I'm glad um, I didn't say no to that. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Hey, you've been holding out on me. I didn't know that you've been in operas. What the hell? I, I, I don't sing. That's, yeah, but you were part of the uh, production. That's really cool. I was part of the part of the team. Yeah, and I was gone after first intermission. <laughs> that's that's the best part. After right? after Tybalt's dead, I'm finished. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out of here. Amazing. I did stay um, one night to watch the entire thing from the wings, and I had no idea how long it took Romeo to die. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, long time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, now that I think about it, like, so Chris, like, that sort of like, th I think that's usually like a like um like a dance call maybe that you're thinking of, where they like teach everyone the choreography, and then you like audition like one by one, or like you wear like a number. Um, yeah. So like maybe that's for like the ensemble. And that's well, like, actually, I was, I'm, I'm actually thinking about multiple, uh, Oh, you're thinking yeah. of like straw hats. Yeah. Think, yeah. 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 Right? That's what yeah. Straw hats. Mm -hmm. like, uh, summer stock mm -hmm. auditions. Oh, yeah, so it's exactly. like, yeah, yeah. So you have your like 92nd audition and you like, there are various people from different like theaters, like all show up in one in usually in New York. Oh. 
and you go in, you do like part of a song and part of and a monologue. And then it's like next, next, next. So right. yeah, I, I, I think you, do you have to pay for that? I, I assume. You uh, might. yeah, I, I, I think so. Cause my daughter's yeah. like, you know, head into that right now. And um, yeah, but usually like, open calls for musical theater. Like you just show up, you don't pay right. for it. And like, right. yeah. And like also in opera, you have to usually like sometimes when they're auditioning, even for principal roles, when your agent just gets you the audition, you don't have to like pay to apply. Um, sometimes you'll still have to pay the pianist. Like it, this mm. makes absolutely no sense. Like the company comes to New York and auditions all these people and like has a pianist in the room to play for all these auditions, but it's the singer's responsibility to pay for it. <laughs> it's like, what? You can't make this shit up. Like what? Yeah. How do they get away with this shit? It's insane. <sighs> Can you tell that I've sort of quit opera? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It'll always be quit. in your heart. I think you've just got a, a strong opinion about the industry and everybody yeah. should. Yeah, no, but I, I really, I, did, I mean, quit is a strong word. I'm yeah. not actively pursuing opera anymore, okay. but it's it's still a skill I have. Obviously, I'm not, I haven't forgotten how to sing it. But that's another um, another tool in your toolbox. Yeah, that's right. exactly. I just it doesn't like the industry doesn't doesn't bring me any joy. So, <laughs> or like rather, the joy of singing opera isn't strong enough for me anymore to tolerate the industry, and so. I'd rather go in another industry that may also still be shitty, but the art form of like comedy and acting, I enjoy more uh, the, the creative process. I enjoy a lot more than, than hmm. opera. So that's it's my where favorite I'm at now, you know, that's amazing. You're exhausting. Honestly, <laughs> I can't think of having, I, well, yeah, it's just, I well, when I say exhausting, Damn, okay. I mean, like, wow, that's I, wow. You're just amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not letting things sit on the back burner and like your friend said uh seems like it's been a habit for a while yeah uh, i didn't yeah, even realize until she i know i think you should send that message i think you should talk to more people i was i was actually going to ask when are you going to take up teaching something so that you know you can kick young people in the butt and say like it's not going to happen next week do it right now yeah well i teach voice every now and then and i coach yeah. you know when when asked. Um, so, you know, here and there I'll teach, <laughs> teach some master classes at like some school programs and like, um, some comp like the junior American traditions competition. I've been like a coach for them. So yeah, yeah I like to impart wisdom, <laughs> whatever wisdom I might have. Uh, yeah. Well, Tenacity. Bradley, yeah. um, I have to say, I think this has been, um, Good for you. I think this has been really good for you. I think for me. I think you, yeah. I think you're yeah. getting pushed. I think there's a little push going on. Oh uh, right yeah, yeah. Am I out of my comfort zone? Do you think? Uh, yeah. I think you're way out of your comfort zone. Uh, <laughs> you're still not out of your purple light. We can't figure out what that's about. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Jessica, I think uh, this has been uh, truly uh, engaging and enlightening. And uh, yeah, you are. You are quite a light for people to look upon. And I, I Aww, don't say that. Good. Yeah. I, I don't say that lightly. Um, yeah. Well, that means I, a lot. I, I mean that. Um, and we miss you. We miss you here in Savannah, but. Uh, oh, well, fun oh, fact. Oh. I mean, it's like, I almost don't want to share, but um, I'll be in Savannah tomorrow. I'm flying. We're flying out, but we're we're there for a wedding. We're there so fast. We're so so quickly. She doesn't like, want to see you, Bass. We're arriving. Like I was like looking at the schedule. I was like, where can I like see yeah. some other friends? Like, yeah. But we're there for a wedding. Um, like flying in. Like we'll be there Friday night. The wedding is all day Saturday, and then we leave Sunday, which is my birthday. So I'm gonna be flying oh, for like six hours on my birthday. Oh my <laughs> happy, goodness! Happy wedding attendance and birthday combo week. All right, when yeah. when will you be at the airport? I'll run up there, and I have I already have oh, a card. Hey, There's a card there right here. For make you. it weird. Uh, actually, <laughs> do you want to give us a ride from there? <laughs> I'll, I'll be glad to give you a ride from the airport. Absolutely. What time are you flying in? <laughs> oh, my God. That would actually be amazing. Yeah. You I know he's going to show up with, like, sunglasses and a white shirt and black slacks with a, with a, with a sign. <laughs> I can't wait to pick you up in my Toyota Corolla. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, seriously, let me know when you're coming in. We'll, oh I'll, my God, thank you. you. That's going to yeah, be amazing. Yeah, Thanks, Chris. Absolutely. I'll text you. <laughs> yeah. Now Bradley's jealous. I'm fine. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I'm be hanging out with No, but if I'm in, I, I just have, I got to figure out a time to go to LA. I haven't been since a very long time ago. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, but yes. Well, I yeah, you do. I guess. I, I can't say that I'll ask you to pick me up from the airport. In fact, I probably won't. But um, <laughs> no, uh, that would is, be weird. Hey, yeah. remember you did my podcast, right? Can you can you pick, <laughs> pick me up from the airport? Can you drive the two and a half hours? <laughs> from I mean, I I actually live right near the airport, so oh okay. If, you, if it's if you need a ride, just let me know. I'm you know? thank. It's very gracious of you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> oh boy. Are we well, good? Is, I yeah, I think. I Are think we good? Been, yeah, good. About to. Yeah, I'm good trying here. To like, like I'm keying it up so that Bass can bring us home, and he's just. I'm already. I'm exhausted. I'm trying. I'm trying. I have exhausted Bradley, so he <laughs> doesn't want to hear any more about all the any things. Any more about your success? I'm exhausted. And your perseverance and your exhausted. ability to pick up new skills as a lifelong learner. Uh, yeah, it's just so exciting. So, uh, Jessica, you have one more day in L.A. Are you hitting any uh, stand-ups yeah. tonight? Yeah. I w I mean, actually, I'm sort of debating going to an open mic tonight that's, like, right near me in okay. Redondo, near Redondo Beach. Um, but I do have to pack, and I have to do laundry. And so mm. it kind of depends on how much I can accomplish. But that's accomplish. what Steph's for. He's right there. What? Are you kidding? He's, like... He's still at work. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. No, he's he's a hard worker. I'm very grateful for him. So he's a good guy. He's a good he does guy. a lot. He does a lot. Yeah. So I need to, you know, keep up my end and and do the laundry. So that's what I'm going to do immediately after we end this. All right. Well, so. I am not going to take up any more of your precious time. Uh, because there is a lot that you need to do. I realize that. And uh, of course, I have to get prepared to pick you up for the airport. And that takes That's right. a lot of preparation for me. Mm -hmm. um, Bradley, any last thoughts? Any last words? No, I think I. Uh, this has been a pleasure. Um, I, I, some great lessons and examples in perseverance. And uh, yeah, I, I, I stand by my opening statement. I don't think your guinea pig uh, has any has any fat on him whatsoever. <laughs> I don't know. He's a little chunky. I still have a lot to get through on, on my yeah, yeah. creative ideas list. So all right. There you go. All, Bob all says happy time. birthday. So thank you, Bob. Yeah, happy birthday from Bob Daniel. Friend of the friend of the pod. Aww. Friend of the pod. And right. and sometimes co-host. So and also yeah. co-host. <laughs> okay. So be nice to Bob. All yeah. Right. Always be nice to Bob. So as as uh as I'm known to do on these last three episodes, we will end with the song and we'll just see what happens. All right. Are we Don't singing? Stop. Oh. Don't stop. Like anyone should know. Like anyone should know. You brought the keys into my life. <laughs> you it down on two Thanks for watching, folks. Like you Appreciate again. your time and your ears. Uh, like and subscribe or do whatever you do when you're listening yeah. to us on this channel and uh, don't forget to call your parents they love you they want to call your mom call your dad call your mom call your dad what you were doing and stream in three two one bye